welcome to the Improv Summit with our new logo because it was always behind me and now you can see the whole show title all the time whenever you want in case you forget where you are but you are here at the Improv Summit. As always I'm your host Spencer with me today I have a very special guest and I always say I have a very special guest so to change it up I take that person's first letter of their first name and Think of an adjective that starts with that name, and luckily they have the same first letter that I do, so this makes it a lot easier for me to uh, come up with on the fly. And today I want to introduce you to uh, hyphenated, so cool, Sean. Oh, nice, nice. Thanks <laughs> for having me, Sean? Spencer. I appreciate it. Being yeah, here. for sure. Thanks for doing it. I have, I have my thing? logo behind me too, but my chair's in front of it, so it's the Improv Summit as well. I got it tattooed on the back of my wall. If you can get tattoos on walls. That's yeah, that's that's the only requirement to be on the show is you actually have to tattoo it somewhere, wherever it may be. Since it's on your wall, that works perfectly fine. Good. Um, what is that? What is that logo? Do you want to share it? Because there is a plug pitch round, so we can just do that right off the bat. Any Dude, plugs, I, any pitches? It, there's no real logo. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying no, it's for anything? your your show. Oh, great. See, this is just my secret me. lab chair logo. That's that's the brand you're, chair. You're a great. I don't actor. need to do any um, plugging for them. They're doing all right. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Do you have anything that you want to plug or pitch for yourself just before we dive in? No, not really. Not really. Uh, Oakland University, that's where I uh, teach and go to school. And it's also a part of my Russian nesting doll bit where it's just the same thing over and over again. <laughs> uh, I guess I, that's, that's all there is. It's like the, what is it? There's like a show or a movie that I watch where it's like, I wonder what's inside this box. It's another box. I wonder what's inside this box. It's another. I don't even remember what that was that I was watching, but... I watched it. It might have been a TikTok. I don't even know uh, anymore. Everything just kind of blurs together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Into I, I'm the same way. I watch way too many movies and read way too many books. And so, like, you try to point out a plot. I'm like, that might have happened in my real life. It might have been something I read. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> might have been something I saw. Might have been something yeah. I dreamt about. I don't remember Usually anymore. it's a mix of all those things, which is not good for my memory. Yeah, right? Exactly. Um, but speaking of memory, let's talk about something that we don't have to really remember that much because we make it up and we go from it. It's called improv for those that weren't sure what it was. Uh, improv. Uh, but let's talk about you, Sean, and your improv background. What is your experience with improv or your improv background? So traditional, or, or I should say formally, I've been in improv since uh, 2018. But uh, I say that formally doing classes, and things like that. I really am more of like a, I improv. I mean, we can all say we improv all the time, but I love to mess with people. Uh, and so I've been doing that for, I don't know, 40 some odd years, uh, just messing with people and having a good time with them. Um, in my, so at Oakland University, I'm, I'm a full-time staff member, but I also teach part-time. And in the fall semester of each of the classes, I will play a prank on my students. And a lot of that, even before I had any improv training, was just improv type stuff. I come up with like a very, you know, minor idea, I might get one of my colleagues to do it. One time I had a student who was, I knew from like when he was a kid, now he was 18 year old in class and I had him pretend to be the professor and uh, just have the class turn on me and different things like that. So I've had some of that training. And then, so I said, I should do official improv and have fun with it. So I started that in 2018 at, uh, at Go Comedy in Ferndale, Michigan, great place. And uh, so that's where I went through that, that program. I'm doing some of the sketch writing with it right now. And uh, since then, I got to teach a class at Oakland University about improv, and now I'm the faculty mm -hmm. advisor for the Improv Club at OU. So oh, that's awesome. It's, it's, it's kind of wormed its way into my life. Yeah, that's, and it'll never leave. It's like a tapeworm. Yeah. It just stays with you. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good scenario, but it's the one I used. It's, ex so. it's, it's the only way to describe it, really. <laughs> it also makes me think of, I just watched a, an ad on Facebook that, it was like talking about healthy cereal and the question like the video started with like someone pouring milk onto gummy worms and i was like is it i was like is this this i was like what is happening then i realized they're like this is what you usually do it's just a bunch of sugar with milk so we've made our sugarless can our sugarless cereal and i was like oh i see i see the reference now i just seeing a picture of gummy worms and then someone's like wait how do i get that gummy worm cereal <laughs> yeah that's how they're like you're missing the point they're like no i'm eating gummy worms now for cereal gummy worms with my milk like that just i was like it's like a like a milk coated gummy worm. It probably isn't that bad, honestly. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try some of that right after this. <laughs> yeah, here on contact me tomorrow summit, and see uh, if I'm not in the hospital from <laughs> gelatin edition. <laughs> Is this the sponsor for the Improv Summit? Is that, are we finding out? <laughs> Thanks to Jello. Just kidding. <laughs> if These only are just gummy worms sponsor. with sugar. Jello, if you want to sponsor me, I'm 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 here. 
Just send me a message in YouTube. Bob, and I'll and gummy it. worms, if that's a thing. If you want to send me all of your inventory, I'm also here. I I will take gummy worms, except not the ones from the gas station that I went to, because they're a little mushy, and it's weird to have a mushy gummy worm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's talk about why you love improv. What why, why do you love improv? What keeps you wanting to continue to take classes and continue to learn and grow in the world of improv? I'm really just, I never grew up, right? I think that's important. I, I like to have fun. I, I'm a serious, like I go to work and I'm like, I wear a suit and everything, but I still joke around all the time at work. When I got my job, I bought a pair of those googly eye glasses that fall down. Oh yeah. Cause I was going to do a bit that's saying, Oh, here's some VR glasses I got. And then I pulled these things out and my wife is like, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. And I'm like, I'm going to do a it. Great idea. They, need to know. they need to know what they're getting into. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm, I'm a goofy guy. I love to have fun. I love to make up stories. I don't want to say lie, but I love to make up stories about things. So this was just a way for me to do it without seeming like a psychopath and uh, meeting a lot of like-minded people. It's just, it's a, it's a wonderfully creative thing to do. Um, and it's just, it's, it, it really broadens so much what you can do with your life. Mm. That's great. And I actually want to touch on that. You said it broadens what you can do in your life. Uh, what are some examples of how you've used improv effectively uh for just everyday tasks or everyday life well so when i when i taught my class on improv i called it i called it improving life with improv mm -hmm. and i talked about like i had sections of here's how it can improve your social life your academic life your relationships that you have things like that um listening is probably the biggest one right uh we do an exercise in there and you might have done some exercise like this before where you have three people in chairs, one person sitting in the middle, two people are on their side, and they're just talking. They're both talking at you the whole time. And your job is to try to listen to as much as, much as you can for both conversations and try to talk to, to each person. It's always chaotic, right? But it just sort of starts to train you a little bit on, are you listening to what's going on? Are you paying attention, right? And you have to do so much of that in improv. And you really should be doing so much of that in real life too, right? Like, you know, a lot of our friends are just kind of like, okay, what do we got here? Uh, you know, on their phone the whole time. So like we gotta mm -hmm. we just gotta slow down pay attention to what's going on in life um and so that's why I, I really like that part of it oh that's great i also thought of the thing where it's like you'll be on your phone or like you're talking to someone and it's just like dead face because they're like just waiting to say their next thing they they don't it's like oh exactly. that's cool you know you know what i was thinking about was dinner i'm gonna have this dinner that was delicious i was just talking about my new puppy yeah but puppies eat and you know what i eat too and let's talk about my dinner it's like the transitions getting into things it's like okay we're, did you hear anything i said yeah they're I just waiting my for mom. their turn to talk when i call my mom too i'll do that sometimes or i'll go she'll say uh-huh she'll say something i'll say did you hear what i said she said yeah i said okay what did i say and she'll go why did i stop listening at one point <laughs> mom at least you're honest i was like why you were bored she's like no i just didn't care <laughs> you gotta sell it better <laughs> well i have my mom's greek so she'll tell it like it is that's um weird. and so i was like yeah she's definitely <laughs> she was like one time i remember i specifically did an improv show and it was like about culture so i was playing like a greek guy and i she tuned in to watch and afterwards i said i said what do you think she said yeah improv was fine when are you gonna shave your sideburns and i was like mom is that what you she's like i was just really focused on your sideburns the whole time i was show. watching that the whole time she's like i was like mom she's like you should get a haircut or like do it yourself and i was like mom haircut places are closed she's like you'll figure it out get some scissors i did that as a like she would cut my hair with scissors as a kid like she would oh, my mom too like oh yeah <laughs> sit us down like, in the bathroom and be like here we go or like we would get like our, our like bangs cut and then she would go mm, they're lopsided come here <laughs> i was like mom you're like i feel more, the cold more. of the scissors like on my forehead that I was like terrified she was gonna like just rip right into my skull and I was like all right then um that being said let's segue into the next question um completely unrelated to anything about cutting hair with scissors uh, or is it let's find out shall we um have there been any scenes that you've done uh as a performer or have seen as an improv audience member that have kind of stuck out with you uh mostly in a I mean, if you have anything that's like in a bad way maybe but mostly in a good way that has helped you go like oh this kind of clicked like this element clicked or this idea now i won't forget it because of what this scene was well i guess for me the the biggest thing i can think of is not a specific type of one but more of like finding a game in a scene mm -hmm. especially you're doing a little bit more of long form comedy because it can be some of them can fall flat, right? You just find out like, 
you know, we're doing a scene and we're having a conversation. We're like, we're just having a completely normal conversation. Nothing interesting is happening. Nothing is going on, right? Until we sort of find like that game, that fun thing that we're doing where we're both, you know, subtly insulting each other or mm -hmm. I'm mispronouncing your name a bunch of different times or whatever it is. And like, so for me, that's where it really, we're like, okay, here's what we found. Here's the interesting thing we found about it. Like the audience might be, might be enjoying it, right? They might be, we might be getting some laughs. But for me, that's where it's fun for me. We're like, all right, now we've kind of hit this groove of here's where we found, our, you know, our thing. And the tricky thing is, is that when you're doing a new scene every single time, it could be, it's kind of hit or miss, right? Even if we're, even if oh, you yeah. and I have been improvising together for years, we might just be on this different wave. Like, and I'm like, I'm going to go here with this. And you're like, no, this is the game over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens. Uh, we <laughs> talked on an episode before about this where, I remember, actually, I don't know if I've said this actually live on an episode before, but I'm going to say it now. Um, I, did, I did a musical improv audition once, um, and I remember, like, I knew the structure of musical improv. Like, I knew to do, like, a verse chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus, whatever. And so I started doing, it was me and another guy. I started doing the verse. I sang, like, yeah, my verse was kind of choppy because I was nervous. I went up and did it. Then I had a really nice chorus. I set up the chorus. It was very clear where the chorus was. Um, and then, oh no, this is what happened. The guy started doing a verse and he just kept singing. Like he just kept going. There was no, like, I was like, you know, you got four lines and then you got a chorus. It was just You're like, waiting 15, to jump in. it was, it was like 15 lines then. And then he just like points at me. And then I was like, it was like, I'm just going to do a chorus. So I just broke out into a chorus, made it a clear chorus, made it a clear choice. And then we started, you know, going back and forth. And then he, he like starts repeating my chorus but then changes the words and makes a new verse out of it and then like does his own chorus and then points back to me and i'm just like i'm like looking at the people who are on the panel i'm like i have i was like i'm just gonna sing my chorus again i had no idea what was happening yeah. and it, that song was like eight and a half minutes long i mean it, it could i was like i think at one point they're like all right thank you and i was like yeah i don't know where the song is going so was this was this other person someone you didn't normally improvise with i so it was an audition so like i had never okay. worked with like anyone before and and the guy was like i've never done musical improv before i've never really done improv before and i was like oh no <laughs> that, like, that's I a situation tell. where he's drowning and you're like he's gonna pull you yeah. down with him yeah literally pulled me down as I was trying to like pull up <laughs> and then I also remember that same audition like I said something I was like making a statement and then the other person started talking while I was talking and completely changed the scene and I went well all right I guess my idea is no longer a thing uh even though I've literally already said it out loud okay um <laughs> it's probably back to the learned... same thing we were talking about of just waiting to say what they they had something in their head and you know we've all we've all probably done this with people that mm -hmm. we've had we're like all right, I got this idea and they're going out with it. And you can, you can even see like, they got this look and they're like, okay, right. I'm going to, I'm going to clearly give you hello grandmother. And anyway, back in the war. And I'm like, okay, all right, that's fine now, you know? And so they're just going down this path, no matter what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that uh, definitely happened. And I also realized a lot of auditions, people just want to kind of show off what they can do and not really think about supporting their scene partner. So I've also learned that sometimes you got to, which I'm not a steamroller. You got to sometimes steamroll your way into a scene to show what you can do while also finding that balance to support your teammate. That, that's really interesting because I, you know, I, I do this for fun, right? But uh, mm -hmm. for people who are looking to do like maybe going to acting or something like that with it, it almost like improv teaches you great skills, but that one is almost counterproductive, right? Because mm -hmm. like one of the biggest things is that you're there to make other people look good, right? That's the most thing that I tell, like you're out there, you know, you have your yes and, right? You're listening, but but you're there to support the other people. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to think about that as, as sort of, if that's the path you're going, not that I'm saying don't do improv, but you know, there's certain things where you have to say, all right, right? It's not also to make yep. these other people look good. Like I got to get this part, right? This is my audition. right? That's yeah, it's it's it is interesting. It is a nice juxtaposition, which I think also there's a juxtaposition in improv too, because a lot of times you think of improv as being like, oh, you just go up on stage and like make stuff up. Yes, but there's also a lot of structure to improv. Like there's a lot of rules there, which can be broken, but there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of ways to navigate suggestions, navigate scenes, um, editing scenes. Like there's a lot of structure in place for something that is completely made up on the spot and so improv itself almost has this nice little juxtaposition of 
literally you make everything up, but also within the vicinity of the structure that is improv. And yeah. so the you structure don't have of five people on the scene talking over each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and it is interesting because it is like when we, uh, at least when I think of structure as a Capricorn, I think of like regimented like lists of things. Whereas improv, it's got a structure, but there's so many branches of that structure that you can take this little dot and you can take it here and then back, you can go backwards, you can go forward, you can go up, you can go down, you can take that structure and put it wherever you want. You just have to kind of follow the idea of yes anding, active listening, these, these very basic skills and ground rules that we do in everyday life in general because we improvise conversations every day. We don't know what someone else is going to say. Uh, Unless you're me and you go to movies and you find really cheesy dialogue and you start to say them before uh, other... Yeah, like, I know where he's going. I know where he's also, going. Also, like, this. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I remember specifically, as at the theater, one of the characters goes, we're not friends. And I said, looked at my two friends, I said, we're family. And then he goes, we're family. And they looked at me and they started laughing. Like, have you seen this? I'm like, no, it's just anyone would know that that's what's happening right, right now. I'll do that a lot to my wife. I'm like, here's what they're going to say next. Here's the next one. <laughs> My also favorite is when I don't get it right, and I'm like, it's like, like we're not friends, we're family. We're a brotherhood of friends. And I'm like, okay, well, basically it's the same thing. Like, come on, like, let's, let's just say family. Like, let's, we don't need to go all, like, you know, whatever on it. Let's just keep it simple. <laughs> which, again, improv is all about keeping it simple, which leads me into my next question. Uh, completely unrelated, but why not? Um, do you have... Let's see, how do I want to phrase this? Um, so, I don't know, let me do this. Uh, to you, what makes a good improviser? We kind of touched on it a little bit, but what makes a good improviser? Or a successful so, improviser, rather? Yeah. Um, obviously, listening, right? I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. Is it, But it's it's more of an awareness, right? It's it's, it's not just listening. It's, it's You have to be aware of a lot of things. You could be listening and looking off in this direction and just really focused, right? And then someone's next to you like this, and they're like, I'm improvising i have a bat and i'm playing this and you're just like ah, you're way off base so like you have to be you have to be listening you have to be aware of things uh flexibility is huge so people mm-hmm. will again all of us come out there and we're like i got a great idea for this i'm gonna run with this and then they and then they you no know, they label you grandmother and you're like all right i was gonna be a biker but all right I'm grandmother now so you have to be able to just just turn on a dime and say all right this is what it is to go with it to agree to go with that um to me that's that's sort of the biggest thing and and also sharing sharing focus, right? The mm-hmm. thing that you don't want to do in in in, in your auditions, but uh, in, in improvising, you want to be able to say, "All right, I'm going to not go out there and see." These are some things where people get really excited, and they'll just do like a monologue for you know five minutes. They're just like, "I got a great idea, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I get really getting into it." And like this is it's good stuff, but there's two mm-hmm. other people just standing there now, right? And you're like, you got to give, you know, do a little bit, a nice little dance. Mm-hmm. Let them do some things. You're aware of it. It's really just like dancing and fighting, I guess. I don't have a dancing or fighting background, sure. but I assume that's what it's like. Yeah, sounds right. Sounds right. I mean, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, but it also makes me think of when you're talking about like that dance of getting in and out. Like, you know, I've been on like, you know, in classes before we have like 10 people and our teacher is always saying, okay, we're halfway through this set. Look around you, see who has not been out yet or hasn't gone out that much. If you feel like you've gone out too much, don't go out. Let other people go out. And even if it takes us two minutes to get people out because they're too shy to go out, let's wait and let them go out. Like, don't force them to go out, but also we want to give them the chance to go out. So if you're feeling like you gotta, you can't wait for someone else to jump out, wait. Let someone else jump out and initiate a scene who hasn't done anything yet. Because I've been up and I've been in, I, I remember I was in, in a, uh, it was like it was like a group of like half and half in a class. We went up to do like a twenty minute set. I didn't get out once in the entire twenty minutes, and the teacher noticed and felt bad. And the teacher was like, "Just go up in the other group." And I was like, "They're like, I saw that you tried, but everyone else just kind of bulldozed right over it." And I was like, "They're like, just go up with the next group." So we I ended up going with the next group, and they were like, "Spencer's gonna initiate the first seat," and I was like, "Uh, please don't make me do anything." Uh, I was perfectly fine. They wanted to make sure you got out there. Now they're going to put too much pressure on you. Yeah, exactly. I was like, great. Now I have to think of a, and now I have to think of an initiation. Okay. What do I do? Uh, Well, well, it's interesting. It goes kind of back to that balance of it's that same awareness, right? Because you can really get Mm -hmm. into it and be like, I got these great things. And you notice like, Hey, Spencer's never moved off the back wall, but I don't care. I'm in my, right. So that's that part of the awareness. But even we were talking about that sort of sharing a lot, 
you, I see this happen with improvisers where it might be that they're shy or they're just maybe too polite, right? But they're like, eh, no, I'm not going to. And they make it go and someone else goes, they go, oh, oh, go ahead, right? And now, so they'll never, you know, they're never getting out there. So you, mm -hmm. you do need to be a little bit assertive, but also not too assertive, right? It's nice. It's a nice balance yeah. going back to your dance. I think it was your, uh -huh. your idea, the dance fighting. Uh, but it's yeah, that sure, balance of like, you can't just be out there all the time, but you can't just always be so polite that you're like, no, go ahead, go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead. And then 20 minutes are gone. And you're like, well, I didn't get in that set. Yeah. And I also think I, as, as a Capricorn, one thing I used to do a lot when I was learning Harold and everything is I would try and figure out the structure and figure out like, oh, I could do this as a callback. I could do this. That I was not even thinking about editing scenes and jumping in. I was so focused on the structure and the organization of everything. Someone's like, you need to come up. I'm like, literally just pull me out. I, I'm just so in my mind of like, like analyzing the structure that yeah. I'm just completely not even focused on jumping out and doing a scene. So like literally just pull me out. Like if you literally grab me by the hand and drag me out, I will do a scene. They I just, just see you on the back line. Forget. Yeah. Well, like the first like six months of improv was like me just going, don't call on me. Don't call on me. I don't want to be picked. I don't want to be picked. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then I realized, and then I even realized again, if we want to talk about that, that balance, I learned the more fun I have is when I walk out with literally nothing in my mind. The, the more I have in my mind, I'm like, oh, I have all these ideas I can pull from so I won't have a, a lack of anything. But then I go out and I don't know what to do with all of this because it's not related to this one thing that someone just said versus me going out, someone says something and I go, okay, I heard what you said. Now how can I respond to that in a way that's unique, is interesting, is a common reaction. It's something that's completely un, a, a reaction that you wouldn't make for someone like, I bought a Christmas tree. Ah, oh, dang it. Like, you know, like, it, like yeah. finding those moments. See, it was funny because you don't expect that. But I also can like, I bought a Christmas tree. All right, this is the season. Like, there's so many ways to go with that. Instead of being like, I bought a Christmas tree. Uh, 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 what is the thing that I was thinking? Of? Oh, I, trees, trees. Okay, trees. Um, uh, wow, is it, a, is it an elm? Like, I mean, it's like, what? Like, yeah. just listening in at that first moment. Uh, and I think also, like I've learned with initiations too, in regards to that balance, is I always am like, I have to initiate by like explaining what I want the scene to be. Like, this is the idea I have. You're my brother, and we're long lost and estranged, and we're going to go figure out who our dad is. Like, versus just going, like, coming out and going, I don't know if I can do this. I do not know if I can do this. Or even better yet, just coming out and just going, uh, pfft. Yeah, uh, like, because the nervous energy, I may not have an idea. Someone else could come in and be like, oh, I see this nervous energy. Let me see if I can plug that into a scene. And then me going, thank you for figuring it out. So yeah. I learned, like, just going out and making a physical choice is also just as great as saying words. Yeah, you could just do a repeated motion be like, and then they're going to come out and do something. It's like, dance hey, fighting. Exactly. No, look, Are you like training dance for fight. dance fighting? I am. I am. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that that's... That's something that really, it's a nice to find. And again, this is what takes years of experience is finding the exact right balance for every improv scene that you do and every improv performer that you play with. That just takes time to figure out that balance within that structure. Uh, Based on which, what you're saying, another thing that I think of about what I think of like good qualities for an improviser is trying not to be perfect, right? And that's what some people, and some people yes. don't care, right? But some people are like, all right, I'm going to get this scene. I got to go out there and have I got to have a good joke ready, or I have to have something like this, right? And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, a, a sort of a counterproductive, the whole idea, like you're saying, right? You just kind of kind of let all that go and go, I'm going to go out there and play off whatever I get, or I'm going to go out there and just first thing that pops into mind, I'm going to do some sort of action mm -hmm. and let someone, you know, play off that. And we'll just see where it goes. I have no idea what, what's happening with it. And I like that too, oh. just this blind being thrown out there and like, Hey, what have we got? Oh, you're, you're playing baseball. No. Oh no. You're, you're killing someone, whatever. Let's just go with it. Yeah, I'm killing someone while I'm playing baseball. Like, literally, it's like, this is my bat, this is his arm. Which one's more heavy? I don't know. So, yeah, see, I, I clearly am a great improviser. <laughs> well, I just thought it really outside of the box. Um, but actually, that leads me into um, one of the... Uh, Sean, thanks so much for joining me here on the Improv Summit. Uh, I have one final question for you, which is kind of the encompass encompassment, sure, why not, of uh, how the Improv Summit came to be. And that's a lot of times I would be in classes, you know, pre-pandemic, but even still with pandemic, I have a lot of people who come up to me and they say, in this voice specifically, uh, Spencer, uh, you take a lot of improv, where should I take improv? And, and usually I say, well, Gandalf, I, I can't always give you the answer, but if you want to know, 
Um, it really depends. And I think that's the biggest thing is like there's a lot of variety to improv and it really depends. So if someone came up to you and said, hey, Spencer, where should I take, or not Spencer, but whoever it is, be like, where, should take, <laughs> where, where should I take should I take improv? Uh, what would be one piece of advice or one tip you'd give to someone uh, to help guide them on their improv journey? I, I'd, go a little, I'd go a little broader. I would say almost, it doesn't matter where you're starting to take improv. I would say just try to go and see it. So for example, you know about this because we've done this before, but Wednesday nights, uh, right, the Second City has the Wham Bam Improv Jam that you can do online for free. And I'll, I'll even tell people like this who might be interested, I say, check it out, right? You can go there and see it. You don't even have to play. Mm -hmm. See what's going on with it. If you want to get in a game, you can get in a game. It's very low. So you don't even have to get up off your seat. I never do, right? Maybe I do once. I but don't. like <laughs> most of the places if you have placed by you, like we have, we have Go Comedy in Ferndale, Michigan, uh, right by where I live. And they'll have what's called fresh sauce, kind of like an open mic improv night, right? On Sunday nights. And you can go there. You don't pay anything. You can see people do improv. You can sign up to do it. And it's just a bunch of little games. So I'd say just try to find some free place where you can watch it to get if you haven't seen it and get your get your feet wet, right? Try it out, mm. see what you do. You build up a little confidence with it. You're like, oh, that was fun. You see how it's going. And, you know, just try to take it from there. Because there's a lot of great places that you can do classes you can pay for, but there's plenty of ways that you can get into it absolutely free. See if it's something for you. Um, it is, by the way, it's for everyone. But uh, see if you like it and, you, and you're willing to go more into it. Mm, I love that. Uh, and I do think that improv is a very important thing for everyone. And even then, I've, I've always said on this show, if you go to do some improv and you're not really digging it and you just did like one class, maybe go somewhere else and see if another class somewhere else is better. Um, because I don't want people to think that like taking one class, and again, I won't say that l there are some people who probably just are like, I just don't like improv and that's okay. But I think it's more of like, give yourself a chance to like it before taking like an eight week class and being like this, I'm not an improviser. Like if you didn't like that improv class, go somewhere else and see if somewhere else may be a better fit for you. And I think that that's- I'll, I'll, I'll say, I completely big... agree with this. I'll say this, it's like a job, right? You could not like a job because of the place that you work at or the people you work with. I've done some improvising where it was a great place, but the group that I had just mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't going, it wasn't gelling. And so like I even sat out and got back into a different class like that. And it was a night and day difference, right? So absolutely, if you have a bad first experience, it could be the place, hopefully it's not. It could be just the people that are there. They might just be having an off night, right? Uh, it's just, you know, give it another try. It's just like any food. You got to try it about 150 times and then you like it. I think that's the number. Yeah, sure. Sounds about right. That's why I don't like octopus yet because I've only had it once. <laughs> got to keep, you got 149 times to go, man. That's why I don't like coffee ice cream either, because I've only had it once. <laughs> well, that you don't need to try again. That's not good. <laughs> or coffee in general. I've had that once. I, I don't like drink it. coffee. I, I, it's, it's great I, to meet another non-coffee. And I'm a I don't like it. Too, so. I, I'm <laughs> water all the way. I'm much more sweet tea, but that's, that's just me. <laughs> I'm from the South. I got to have my sweet tea. Uh, anyway, thanks again for joining us here, Sean, on the Improv Summit. Uh, I did say that was the last question I had for you, but uh, as always on the show, I'm a big liar, and I have another question for you. Okay. And that question is, you know, we've been talking a lot about improv. Uh, you want to do some improv? Yeah, I'm not going to talk the talk and not walk the walk. Let's go. Yes, and let's do it. <laughs> That's right. All right, we're going to do some improv. Sean, what I need from you is the answer to this question. Do you want a location, a relationship, or a word? Let's go with a word. Word. I'm going to give you two. You tell me which one you want to go with. The suggestions are nine and taste. Nine and taste. <laughs> Let's go with taste. Taste. All right. Who would you like to initiate this scene? I'll initiate. All right. Thank you. Taste. But what is this? This is uh, some sort of, uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad what you made, but not the best. You just, uh, I don't want to insult your uh, expertise, but uh, you just ate a clove of garlic. <laughs> okay. Well, you put this in front of me like this is my plate. Uh, okay. So show me what you have made for me. I'm sorry. That's. I'll get the palate cleanser. Okay, sure. chef. Um, 
Well, the, the first plate is uh, it's actually a deep fried clove of garlic. <coughs> this is a block of salt. What is this? It's a deep fried clove of garlic. Oh, okay. Okay. Listen, uh, I'll give you uh, one final chance. Uh, we, we don't have all day for this. So remember, bring your good stuff here for this. You sure, came I, to I, France for a reason, right? You left your, your home to, to study the better food, so... Yes, Chef. Um, well, I do have, like, two other dishes that may be more to your liking. Um, I don't want to insult okay. your expertise, no. um, but these are very simple, classic dishes. Um, nothing too fancy. Um, I have a uh, bowl of uh, mac and cheese. Uh, mac and cheese uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, you can take a bite I'll explain mac it to you, and, as you, as you. mac and cheese uh, I don't mac and that. cheese uh, with a, a clove of garlic uh, mixed in um, it's just uh, just to give it a little flavor you really like this garlic I uh, you know, garlic makes food taste better Okay, I was. I thought I would hate it, but it's not bad. Uh, what's what's your final dish? I want to see. Maybe uh, you. It seems like you're so climbing up hill. I I got I got I got a dessert. Dessert. I figured would would kind of round out the meal, you know. So I have a dessert right here. It's uh for you. It is a it's a moist cake. Um, it's like a like a German chocolate cake. Uh, and the you know how I usually put coconut shredding on it. Um, feel free to take a bite. Um. Uh, that coconut shredding, I actually decided to make garlic shredding, so it's just a little bit of a garlic, a German garlic cake. Oh, oh, these Americans. Uh, okay, listen. Uh, you know that I have cannot have too much garlic, or things go wrong for me. I don't. Are you a vampire? No, I'm not vampires. This is not a real thing, but. <laughs> you, you are a vampire. Can... Guess my. Trick. Would you like a steak? No! <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Thanks everybody so much for coming to the Improv Summit. As always, I'm your host, Spencer. That's Sean. See you next time. Bye. See y'all. Let's dance fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>